Hey guys, Greg Nutt here, and I'm making a top quilt. I'm making a top quilt using the Karo Step Baffle Method. And, uh, you know, I'm posting this because I have taken advantage of instruction on YouTube, and I guess it's time for me to give back. Now, without further ado, what are some of the things you're going to see on this video? Well, you're going to see a multi-cam material, and the reason why is because I want a multi-cam top quilt. Haven't been able to find one for sale. The local vendors appear to be, you know, slow on making them nowadays, so I'm going to make my own. I also need one for, say, 0 to 5 degrees, and that's going to drive how much uh, down I put in the seam. So, so far I've got 1.5 multi-cam for the outer shell, um, Argon 67 for the inner shell, and I've got um, 950 fill power down, 16 ounces of it, treated for the, uh, the downy goodness on the inside. Got uh, got the down from downlinens.com. I got the uh, the material from dutchwaregear.com, and I also got some baffle material. Okay, this baffle material, if you measure it, this is the widest of Dutch cells. I don't recall what he listed as, but when I measured it, three and a half inches. So I put a quarter of an inch on either side, three inch baffles. So three inch baffles, sixteen ounces, and nine fifty uh, down. I think I'm going to get pretty low. Now, some of the tools I used. I cut the material with a thing called a wood burner. If you haven't ever tried it, I think you'd like it. These are really inexpensive. Get them at Hobby Lobby, other hobby shops. Okay, a pattern. Okay, the Karo step pattern, uh, the average or, or standard is 14 inch square. And on this square, I've got the baffles, which are six inch, okay, marked here. And as I'll lay this down using a registration point on one piece of material, it will also serve as a registration starting point on the other piece of material. That way I can ensure that my baffles line up when I sew the bottom baffles and the top baffles. Okay. I'm using cam snaps. Okay. Cam snaps, these nice little plastic snaps that you sometimes see on baby bibs, those types of things. If you order, it's like about $5 worth. You get about 100 Okay. This, on the other hand, is anywhere from $15 to $20. This is what you use to press the cam snaps together, okay? Pretty handy. I've used them on a number of projects, and uh, they'll come in very handy if you buy them. This is the down inductor. This is what's used to suck and blow the down from the, the, uh, the bag down here and into the quilt up here. I'll go over that in detail uh, when the time comes. The blue painter's tape. This stuff is really good because it doesn't leave a residue and it, comes, it, it sticks when you need it to and it doesn't stick when you don't want it to. And then again, the fabric, okay? This is a scrap piece that I use. Um, you know, if you make a, a, a top quilt, I'm six foot tall, my top quilt's gonna be, I don't know, we'll talk about dimensions in a minute, around 81 inches. Well, that's kind of an odd size, but you're ordering this by the yard. And unless you buy it by the half yard, you're probably gonna end up with three yards of material. Um, this is not the cheapest material in the world, but guess what? The extra scraps you have left over, you can use to make sure that your sewing machine is behaving, you know? And uh, you, can, you, can, you can try different, uh, you know, different stitches using some of the stuff that you're gonna use, like this baffle material, to make sure that everything is right on time. Every time I change a needle, every time I change the bobbin, okay, I went to my test material here to make sure everything was running good. That's incredibly important, not so much for the multi-cam because it's 1.5, but this Argon 67, it's not temperamental, but you want to make sure that, you know, things aren't widening up because you're going to be punching holes in this, and uh, the fewer holes, the better. All right, so those are the tools. I'm, uh, I'm going to take you along on this trip. There may be a question or two you don't answer. All right, on answer some of the one of the main questions that primary questions I didn't see answered on the videos that I saw uh, up leading up to this one is how do you get the bottom baffles to line up with the top baffles and what does that look like when you're sewing that? Hey, you know what? That's just a game of patience, and that is simply using something like this, lining the uh, you know starting in the middle, and I'll talk about that during the video. Uh, and, and ensuring that your grid is registered initially from one comma point in the center of the material. And uh, when the time comes to go to the sewing machine, uh, you know, you, it's, it's a deliberate process that, that, that requires patience. And you just go one at a time and you sew them. It doesn't take that long. Yeah. It's one of the things I had to figure out is 
you know, what size did I want to make this top quilt. Fortunately for me, I have a couple of top quilts that I like that I can compare. I can compare it to. The one on the left, that's a long top quilt with a closed bottom, okay? And it's, you know, it's 84, 85 inches long. That, when I'm in my hammock, I can pull up over my head. So 85 inches, that's a little longer than I want it to be. The one on the right, that is, uh, this is kind of like the three bears. The one on the right is my favorite top quilt, but it's a little too short. When I get in the hammock, it only comes up to my neck. So I'm going for the just right size, and that's going to be a compromise between these two. And I figure if I, uh, if I make mine about 81 inches long, I'll be just about right. Now, the one on the right, that's my favorite top quilt. Um, and so there are some features that I like about it. One of them is I like the snap closure and the, the drawstring for the foot box. I like that because this quilt I'm going to make is zero to five degrees. And uh, if I can vent it when I need to, I figure that's a winner. So uh, again, the one on the right, that's, uh, that's my favorite top quilt. The, uh, the dimensions across the foot end are, is 40 inches and across the head end is 50 inches. So I'm gonna stick with about the same dimensions. I'm only just gonna stretch it out and make it a little longer so that to, instead of just coming up to my neck, it'll come up to my, to my nose. So my recommendation is anyone that's considering, uh, you know, making one of these things and trying to figure out how big to make it. Hey, it's ideal if you can compare it to something you've used before. Um, if you don't have that luxury, you can simply look at some of the websites out there. Zpacks.com has an awesome web or a table on their um, website that talks about what they offer. You know, hammock gear. The other vendors, um, you know, they they'll tell you what the dimensions are of the top quilts that they sell, and you can get in the ballpark. Okay, so here's the pattern that I'm using. And like anything else, I found this on YouTube, someone else uh, before me, and uh, so I'm, I'm pretty much doing what they did. As I just described, uh, I've got, uh, actually starting with 54 inches of raw material across the top, and 42 across the bottom. And uh, you can see I've got it marked out here. I've got the center um, marked with my uh, measuring tape. Just simply taped it to the floor uh, as an anchor point for my template. So I'll show you in just a second. This is the top, okay, and then the bottom of the foot end is down here. And if you look closely, you can see where I've marked with my silver, you know, Sharpie marker a line that goes from the, you know, 54 to the 42 inches. Okay, so it goes at an angle. Um, again, like I said, I've got this anchored. This is the uh, this is the uh, Argon uh, 67, and someone else I was doing one of these. I saw they made a 14 by 14 square, which is the size of the baffles uh, area, and then the actual baffles themselves. I've got little marks; they're six inches apart. Okay, and when you put the, uh, the template down, it's very easy to take the Sharpie and make little dots. You see a dot there and a dot there. And then just take six inches of tape and mark it across. Now, so we've got that anchored there. Once I do one side, I've already done the multi-cam, which is right over there. But once I do one side, I simply flip the, uh, take the, uh, you can see the little mark there in the center. Put this on the other side, tape it back down, and then run the pattern down the uh, the other side. This is the same pattern I used for the uh, the multi cam, and I start off with the same anchor point, which is off the center. And so these should these uh, these should line up with the tops. Okay, so so I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you how to do that. It's pretty simple. I took this up, just move it to the other side of the line there. Okay, you see, you can see where it lines up with the uh, the blue there, and I'm going to tape this back down with my blue tape. Okay, now I'm working off of that side of the uh, the center line reference, which is my um, tape measure. Tape measure breaks pretty good straight edge uh, for things like this. So here you go, boom. 
I'm just lined up with all my tape. Now, right, now I do my point of reference to the other side, and I've got these little dots marking my two inches of, uh, of play for my um, top or trim or excess, whatever you want to call it. I keep the handle part on the bottom, or have kept this, this part, this hole, if you will, uh, to the bottom for all of these uh, so far. So I line it up with my, my line on the bottom, align my two lines up on the, on the side that I've already marked for that piece of tape. Here we go. Is that close enough? Mm -hmm. See over here? Yeah. All right, now I'm making one little mark there, one little mark there, one little mark there, one little mark there, okay? All right, sizzle so marks. Now, pick the thing up, move. Simply line this back up, line across the bottom, with the reference points on the side that I've already marked. Okay, and then I mark the top. Now on the top here, because this is going from, you know, 50 inches to 40 inches, this, you know, that that's an angle. These baffles on the side, I'm going to mark them six inches, but I'm going to make this five, four, three, two, and that'll be the last baffle because there's a, there's a point of diminishing returns for that, okay? Simply move this up, line the dots up again, okay? Line the dots up over here that I've already made, and take my little Sharpie, I'm going to make two little dots. One there, one there. So I think by now you should probably get the idea Okay, all right, folks. I just finished uh, taping up and marking um, exactly where the baffles are going to go on the inner um, fabric, the Argon 67. And you can see that <clears throat> these dudes are all six inches. Okay, but because the side here is tapered, okay, from uh, you know around 50 inches across the top to about you know 40 inches across the bottom. You know, there's a that's an angle. So as it goes from the top to the bottom, you can see instead of being six inches, that one's five, then that one's four, then the next one's three, and then two. And then that's you know, I don't know about the two. It seems kind of uh, that's gonna be kind of. So I mean, this first time I ever met, made one of these, so I'm not sure about the two. But there's no baffles after that. And uh, the next thing we're gonna do is pull this up off the floor. And take it over to the uh, the table. Uh, I'm not going to film that part, but you pretty much imagine me taking a uh, a wood burning uh, iron uh, with a wooden straight edge and whoosh, melting that. And yeah, that's for just the weight. I've, I've finished sewing. Um, there's the uh, the old multi cam epsilon, and then here's the uh, um, argon 67. This Argon 67. If you've never sewed it before, um, plan on being patient. Okay, uh, that's all I'm going to say about that. But anyway, so uh, after uh, after you cut it, after you mark it for cutting, and, and you uh, you do all your measuring, uh, the next step would be to do the the edges, and then my next my following step, um, you can see that uh, I've already started. You know some of my uh, little uh, baffles and here's the deal here's how it's done when I uh, when I marked this marked little little dots so they wouldn't show through and I took the blue tape painters tape and put them on there that's what my alignment is um, I'm gonna come off with that about a quarter of an inch and one of the nice things about this uh, sewing machine is I can do this with my knee I can raise it raise it up I get it all aligned you know boom and then when I get done, after I sew my line here and backstitch and lock it in, I just peel the blue tape off, okay? So I get as close as I can to the blue tape without actually sewing over top of it. This made me run. Hopefully I can uh, do both two things at, uh, at one time. I'm actually holding the camera, cutting them at an angle. Hope that doesn't make anybody seasick, but I'm like stitch in, snip it off. I'll snip it off the ends. And then like I said, I've got this painter's tape here. When it's left handed, got the corner of it, and it comes up like Yogi, and there's my baffle. All right, and uh, it takes a patient person to do this, but I'll tell you what, um, I got a lot of courage from watching other videos 
Hopefully this will inspire others. It's not nearly as difficult as it looks. All right, folks, I got all the, uh, the baffles along sewed to this side. Okay, I don't know if you can see that. This is pretty clear. And it, uh, it works really good with uh, the blue tape because you can see right through it and it helps you to keep it aligned. Um, you can see the, uh, the dimensions on this. I said I was going to make this a little longer. Right now it's like 86 inches long, but I've still got to join these two and make, make my flaps for my uh, cord, draw cord to go through and that kind of stuff. So it'll end up being a, probably 81 inches or so when I'm done. And I'm six foot tall. I like the idea of being able to you know, pull it up at least to my uh, to my nose. Um, what it up over here is the top part. Now you can see it's still got the uh, still got the tape marks on it, and uh, so each of the tape marks correspond with uh, one of these baffles on the top because I laid the pattern out exactly the same. And uh, this is more sausage making. I'll lay this uh, on down on top of the uh, the finished side and then carefully take it over to the sewing machine and pay close attention to ensure that I sew the uh, the baffle to the corresponding uh, blue blue piece of tape and uh, make it done with that the speaker anyway got all the baffles sewed I uh, I took a liberty here at the bottom to trim two inches <clears throat> from the uh, inner layer and what I'll do is I will flap this over so that's and then uh, run my channels through here for the uh, for the string for the gather on the bottom and then I'll do the same I'm going to do the same at the top so when you look at the uh, the resultant overall length of this thing I'm gonna hit my target it's gonna be right around 82 inches so that's good Got the uh, on the bottom I was looking for 40 so on this gets up here after I roll those those hems in like so I'm going to uh, hit my target of 40 and then uh, here up on the top after I roll the hems in and everything I'm gonna be my target was to be a minimum of 50 and right now it's looking like I'm gonna be 51 so happy with that uh, so there's your update. I'm uh, I'm at work stoppage right now because I ordered some supplies for my sewing machine. One of which is a uh, foot attachment that would allow me to sit along this edge and put a put a real a real nice um, stitch because it's, I want that to be kind of close and kind of tight. And I only want to do it one time. And if I freehand it, I can get close, but I bought the dog on attach and might as well use it. <clears throat> So that's it. Once we get to the next step, I will share an update. What's up, Sadie? Okay, folks, time for a progress report. Um, remember earlier in the video, I showed you my favorite top quilt that was going to kind of serve as a model for my uh, my dimensions, and that's my 25 degree underground quilt that uh, is 50 degree or 50 inches across the top and uh, 40 inches across the bottom. And now I've laid it on top of my uh, my new top quilt um, just to kind of check the dimensions and of course when you put down on these things they puff up a little bit so, but uh, the dimensions of these are basically the same along the sides and uh, a little longer on the tops so I'm right where I want to be real happy with the project so far and uh, once I sew the uh, the end flaps over and create the channels uh, for the uh, for the drawstrings uh, it'll be time to uh, to stuff them down so with the uh, let's get this bad boy out of the way um, <clears throat> basically I got a uh, I got this new attachment it finally came in the mail and, and it, it allowed me to make a really nice clean stitch across the side I uh, I started with some black thread when I, I made the uh, the edge at first I almost wish I hadn't but not a big deal but if you look at the other side that, that uh, sewing machine attachment allowed me to be pretty precise, so I'm super happy with that. Um, so both sides and left over, 
So an opening on the side to stuff the down end. You see in the inside there, that's it's basically the width of two baffles, 28 inches. Uh, give me an opportunity to poke uh, down in there uh, when, when the time comes, which is probably what I'm going to show you two steps from now. Okay, folks, next step, I got this uh, little doohickey here measuring off a half inch. I've simply just uh, turned the, the edge. I'm going to sew a, uh, a line down across there. And when I get that line sewed, then I'm going to flip this dude over like Yogi. And I'll show you how I'm going to um, posture this thing to accept the, uh, the drawstring. Okay, so I, uh, I flipped this over and uh, did a, a channel trim. You can barely see those threads down there, whatever. And then I flipped it back over one more time, inch and a half. And uh, I'm going to sew along this edge here. And then you see the blue tape in the center? This tape here, this marks an area where I'm going to sew a gap. And that's going to allow a channel for the string to come through that I use to draw this up around my neck. I'm not going to buttonhole it. I'm going to leave a gap there instead. And, uh, all right, I'll show you the next step when I'm done doing that. Okay, folks, um, whoever said imitation is the best form of flattery, um, well, I think it's a pretty good saying. <clears throat> you can see that what I'm beginning to construct here, or following up with, is going to look a lot, or very similar to my uh, favorite top quilt. It's my favorite for a number of reasons, and so I am copying not only some of the dimensions, but also kind of some of the techniques that are used to channel the string at the top. Um, I'm just going to show you the sewing part, and I'll show you the functionality of how this traps the cord, or the, uh, the shot cord, inside later, but... I'm going to make a, I'm going to sew a line here, similar to this one, that will um, create the, uh, the initial opening that the, uh, the cord will bind to on this end as it comes across through this channel that tightens. Instead of making a button hook at the top, like this is, I left the gap at the bottom. So I'm going to fashion some, uh, a channel here that's actually going to, going to turn and it's going to bring that string down. Um, Something like that. I uh, may not get that fancy, not sure, but in, in any event, I'm not copying this part. <clears throat> Making my own little deal there. I'll show you that later. And coming back on this side, you know, we'll do the same thing with a string. So, that's, that's the next, the, that is the next event. Okay, folks, here's what we, going, we have going on. I've finished the end piece trim here. Um, it probably didn't help that I used a light brown tape to or um, stitching to show you, but I made a, a, a stitch right there with a little gap. I'll put a plug on the end, tie the cord, the cord will go through this channel. It's about half an inch, and the half inch channel runs all the way across. Now in the middle, tapers down at 45 degree angles on this side and that side, and this is uh, a little gap here, it's open. So it'll come out right there, it'll be right at my neck. Oh no, this is the foot end, I'm sorry. This is where the foot end will be. Uh, but the neck end's just the same, and I'll be able to pull the draw the cord down through the middle, and uh, and that's how I'll cinch it up. But <clears throat> I'm not going to put that through string through yet. I'm ready for the uh, the stuffing party, and as soon as I'm done with that, I'll show you how the string works. Okay. Okay, folks. The next step in the project is to figure out how to get the down out of the uh, the bag, the burlap bag that it came in, and into the top quilt. I mentioned it earlier, I've never made a top quilt or an under quilt uh, with down. Sewed plenty, but never done the down deal. So did a little bit of research, found this on hammock forms. Um, it's called a down eductor. And uh, I'm going to pass along the, uh, the parts and how I plan to do it. Before you, you see $10 worth of parts, I got it uh, at Lowe's. They're all one and a half inch. Uh, the diameter uh, you, you'll find PVC pipe in a one and a quarter as well but the the plans I found called for one and a half so pay attention to that if you decide to do this three pieces these two pieces right here are pretty simple this one is the piece that will stick down into the bag and draw the down up this um, section here the shot back will actually connect to this end and it will be blowing it'll be in the blow mode and uh, this third piece, this is, the, this is the piece that makes it all happen. Uh, for those of you that are familiar with aerodynamics and the Venturi effect, 
there's a uh, there's a piece of plastic in there okay and that plastic is uh, you know it's something that's normally used for for the vintage to keep things uh, flowing down the pipe uh, when you have water flowing down it and in this case it creates a channel um, that uh, forms the uh, the venturi that creates the vacuum that draws it down up out of the bag. So as you hook this, as, as this is hooked to the shop vac, you turn the shop vac on. The area that the, the air is traveling in is larger on this portion than it is up through here. So this this black line right here represents that valve, if you will. So um, the venturi effect go you when you go from the large area to the smaller area that makes the speed of that air increase and when it passes this valve it creates a vacuum okay and that vacuum is what I'm counting on to draw the down out of the sack and up to this pipe okay so you got this on the quilt end that on the vacuum end and this drawing the down out of the bag and I've been told that you don't want to you know be too aggressive with trying to vacuum the down out because you can get uh, you can clog up the valve uh, or the pipe so I'll take my time hopefully that'll work um, and uh, I'll be filming it so you're gonna see if it works but again that's the down eductor and whoever came up with it thanks a lot for the idea if it doesn't work then uh, hey nice try but uh, we'll see I'm willing to give it a try all right folks here we are welcome to my shower and this is where we're going to do this uh, this, this down uh, operation. So, got my shop back. Didn't have to tape it. I uh, already showed you what this device here is. Just cram your old hose in there. Did a dry run on it, and I'm getting a little bit of uh, vacuum uh, action there from the venturi effect. A lot of blow in there. Um, as long as I, I keep everything under control, I think I'm going to be fine. Now, one of the things that I did, um, I showed this earlier. But I left the gap on the side for the down that was uh, two baffles wide, each, you know, baffle uh, area. So that ended up being 28 inches. And when I did that, I took a blue tape, and blue tape here serves two purposes. First, uh, initially, the, the initial purpose of it was me to remember not to sew there to leave the gap. And now what I found out when, uh, when I got these little clips out and I, I flipped my, uh, my material over, um, it actually, it's, it's, it's stiff, so when the clips go around it, it, it forms kind of a, a sharp area that uh, is easy to control, okay? So, we're going to, um, we're going to get this party started, and, uh, we're going to do some down. So, I'll, uh, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to make it sit to this whole thing, but, uh, I, I, I'm going to look at the, uh, the clock when I actually start and uh, see how long this takes. Uh, I've seen a lot of people start things like this um, with some type of uh, contraption and then ended up doing the, uh, the old hand stuff routine. Not sure what direction I'm gonna head in yet, but uh, um, you know, there'll be a little trial and error at first before I get going. So, all right. Uh, 
I was just too worried that as I managed this and, and paid less and less attention, as this got more and more boring, that, uh, you know, uh, probably smarter to reduce this and, uh, and uh, get more control. Um, if my hand gets tired holding on to it later, I may go get a Velcro strap if I can find one. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I can already feel some down in there, and uh, this works great. I have found that uh, if you rush it and occasionally you look, it, uh, if it gets clogged, it'll actually start blowing it down out a little bit. All you got to do to rectify that is just turn around and, you know, just, you know. Just <laughs> Okay, let's look at the foot end. I did the foot end just like I did the head end. Uh, the only difference is <clears throat> I used uh, Zingit, okay, this yellow Zingit, because the cord on the foot end doesn't need to be flexible like it does on the, uh, the head end. And you might be able to see a little better on this end. Um, this channel is sewn the same way. Here's a, uh, well, that's probably 30 degrees, 60 degrees, whichever way you're looking at it. It leaves a little gap right there where the string can come through. That string gets blocked by this little wooden bead that's tied in there. So pull that in there and it goes inside the uh, the gap there and just and stays hidden away. Okay, again had the channel going across here and then it comes out. There may have be left a gap and that's where this feeds out. So <clears throat> again there's a bead and then a uh, cord lock. Same on the other side. And then simply the only difference between this and the top is, again, this isn't flexible. And then you can either tie the knot on the inside or the outside uh, when, you, uh, when you close the end. <coughs> yep, very satisfied. Uh, a little closer look at the, uh, the cord snap or the, uh, the uh, cam snaps. And I got six of those, five inches apart going up, so about 30 inches up. Okay, folks, here it is, the finished product. I'm declaring victory. Kind of glad that the project's over, but I enjoyed every second of it. Um, from a scale of, uh, you know, 1 to 10 in terms of difficulty, it's around a 7. If you've got a decent sewing machine and decent skills and you take your time, measure twice, cut once, that type of stuff, this will not be a problem for you. Final weight, 24 ounces. 81 inches long, and again, the dimensions across the top or the head end was 50 inches and the foot end was 40 inches. Uh, I'm digging this thing, can't wait to get it into the woods. And I'm Grape Nut, I'm on Hammock Forums, I'm on Facebook, some of the hammock channels there. If you see this, if you see this video, you want to comment or ask questions, please feel free to. I'm happy to help to answer them for you and help you in any way I can. So there it is. I love it, declaring victory. That is my DIY Caro Step Baffle Top Quilt. <laughs>